Jose Mourinho, Antonio Conte and Ange Postacoglu are the last three managers of Tottenham Hotspur. And before you say they're not the last three managers of Tottenham Hotspur, I am not, and repeat, not counting manager of the month of that season, Nuno Espirito Santo. I'm just not counting him. He was a blip. He was a mistake. We're not talking about him, and that is final. So let's get back to the main point. These three managers are the last proper managers of Tottenham Hotspur. And they all had their own style of play, managerial techniques, personalities, and they all left a mark on Tottenham Hotspur. But one of them stands out from the rest, and I'll be explaining that today. And I'll be asking the question why Ange Potokoglu is ahead of Jose Mourinho and Antonio Conte. So this video was inspired by a statistic that I mentioned in my reaction to the Newcastle game. And it basically was that Antonio Conte and Ange Postacoglu have very similar records to each other after their first 32 games. Basically, it reads like this. Antonio Conte spurs after 32 games, 60 points plus 22 Goal difference. And Ange Postacoglu spurs after 32 games, 60 points plus 16 goal difference. And the person who tweeted this, who I can't remember who it was, said, Yet the media want everyone to believe Spurs have turned a corner under Postacoglu just because he plays more attacking football and calls people mates. First of all, I'm still quite confused about the agenda against Postacoglu. It seems to me that... People are judging him far too early. And maybe people say that he isn't, you know, isn't critiqued like the same of other managers, you could say. Like Eric Ten Hag is constantly berated. Like, you know, Jurgen Klopp, Arteta, when a result goes bad. But some of these managers have something to fall back on. Whereas Postacoglu in his first season... Hasn't got a lot to fall back on yet. You know, we're still in that stage of processing whereabouts he ranks with these other managers. But then at the same time, I don't remember Pochettino being criticised too much this season. I haven't seen much of that on social media, mainly. It seems to be after they spent a billion pounds, everything's just normal. But going back to Tottenham and the managerial situation, you know, these stats, I mean, can you read too far into them? I'm not so sure. I feel like, you know, Antonio Conte, first of all, had Harry Kane. We've got to remember that. He had Harry Kane at his disposal. And it was a bit of a managerial bounce. And he did get us top four. And Postacoglu hasn't yet achieved that at Tottenham this season. We don't know whether we're going to get Champions League football. The jury is out on that one. But when it comes to comparing Postacoglu and Conte and Jose Mourinho, a lot of similar things come about. About why weren't those managers backed to maybe the similar level of Postacoglu. And the main answer to that is that Conte and Mourinho were short-term solutions. At the time, I agree with them. We'll start with Jose Mourinho. Jose Mourinho came into the club after Maurizio Pochettino sacking and basically was seen as someone who could deal with the talent we had at our disposal and basically the likes of Harry Kane and Son. Were, they needed to win now. That was what it was. They needed to win now. And we all know how he ended. He got sacked on the eve of a Carabao Cup final, which he could have won. We don't know if he would have, but he could have won a trophy for Tottenham. And looking back at the time, I was frustrated by Jose Mourinho's Tottenham. The football was a bit boring in stages. We did have some glamour fixtures like Manchester United away during the COVID season. I think you've got to take that into consideration. And after watching the Amazon documentary as well, it was quite heavy Jose PR. It was pretty much Jose acting like, you know, he 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 didn't want to be there. It was a bit of another job. And the similar was for Conte. Conte turned down the Tottenham job when he was first offered it. Then Nuno came in. But then Conte was then offered it again halfway through a season. He wanted so much. We all know how it ended. It started well. Big bounce. Got into top four. But it didn't really matter. The football, the season after was awful. We ended up finishing eighth. And it was just absolutely abysmal. We had Stellini at the helm and Ryan Mason towards the end as well. And the last few fixtures were absolutely dire. And, you know, Postacoglu has had to pick up the pieces from these two managers. And when I reflect on those two managers, at the time, I wanted to back Conte more. And 
I wanted them to put pen to paper, but again, I say this a lot on a lot of podcasts I appear on. Conte knew he was bigger than Tottenham. He acted like he was bigger than Tottenham, saying that top four isn't a name for me. You know, I'm used to dealing with more. And I know people will say Postacoglu saying that, but he means it in a different mentality to Conte. When Postacoglu says it, he means it in the sense of, I want to take this club to big, bigger and better. When Conte says it, he says, I'm used to bigger and better. I'm used to winning league titles and that sort of thing. But, you know, when I think about Conte... I, I did want to back him, I did, but he just didn't want to commit to Spurs. And the Southampton video was, you know, the final now in the coffin. And he did say a lot of home truths, but you can't say it like that. You can't act like that. Why, Antonio? Why do you think it is like this? Why? Bah, I don't know, because they are used to here. They're used to here. Don't play for, uh, for, uh, for something important. Yeah. And... Uh, they don't play, uh, they don't want to play under pressure. They don't want to play under stress. <laughs> ah, yeah, it's easy in this way. And Tottenham, Tottenham story is this. 20 years that there is the owner and they never won something. But why? Only for, the, the fault is only for the club or for the every manager that stay uh, here. And uh, I have seen uh, the manager that Tottenham had on the bench. You risk to disrupt the figure of the manager and to protect the other situation in every moment. And now, and now, until now, I try to hide the situation, but now no, because I repeat, I don't want to see what I have seen today, because this is unacceptable. Also for the respect for the fans. They follow us, pay the tickets, and to see the team another time, to have this type of performance, for me, I repeat, this is unacceptable. Two managerial reigns where the players would have been on the floor. They would have been absolutely, you know, just costumes of themselves. They just wouldn't have been performing to their full capacity. And it was just a very struggling dressing room. We saw, you know, players not hitting the heights that we know they can, like Sun, like Kulisevsky, like Basuma. And this season, Postacoglu has shown those players can have fine form. I know at the moment some of those players have dropped off a little bit and the jury's out as to why that is. But I think anyone criticising Postacoglu and wanting maybe... like I see a lot of people say that, but, you know... Postacoglu, is he the one now? Or, you know, why didn't we back these managers? They were toxic. They were not Tottenham Hotspur managers. They didn't understand the club. They were here for the short term and it did not work. At the time, I thought it could, but in reflection, it did not work. It was never going to work. Of course, Levy's not going to give money for Conte to sign a centre-back because he didn't even want to stay at the club. He didn't commit his future and he was just looking for the exit door whenever it was possible. Whereas Postacoglu, you can tell... He wants to stay here and build something. That's why he's been backed in the market. That's why he's been able to sign his goalkeeper, his defender and his attacking midfielder because he sees his future at Tottenham Hotspur. He wants to build an attacking team. And I know at the moment there's a lot of people questioning his style of play. Has he got a plan B? But with tweaks, we can build something special with Postacoglu at Tottenham. That's why I think he is clear of the likes of Jose Mourinho, Antonio Conte and not even mentioning Nuno Espirito Santo because that's just... Silly talk. But them two, yeah, they're called serial winners. They've been everywhere and won it, and they didn't win it at Tottenham. Postacoglu, with backing from the board, with backing by the fans, can go to the very top. Conte was just too explosive. And there's a reason, if you look at it now, Conte's not had a job since. Mourinho went to Roma. Yeah, he won the Europa Conference League there. But I'm not sure if he's going to get a job now. I don't, I don't know where these next two managers go. Whereas Postacoglu, with his attacking style, could go into any job and do a good job. You know, he just needs better players at this current time. And the squad is going to evolve at Tottenham. He is going to get his players. He is going to, you know, take this team to the very top. I'm backing it to happen. I can just... That's not just me saying the very top is, we're going to win a league next year. I just feel like going back to what we knew under Pochettino, basically... 
Levy has to admit, under Pochettino, he had it all. He could have done the same, but he sacked him. He went down that route of trying to get these serial winners and it backfired massively. Postacoglu is the like, second incarnation of Pochettino, but he's playing that attacking style we all love to see. And with time and a little bit of money behind him, he can build something that can compete. And anyone who questions Postacoglu in the sense of where well, we managed in Japan, Australia and Scotland, I think is... It's, it's very naive. It's very naive. And I, I talk to a lot of my Australian fans and I know they can see the vision as well. They know what we're seeing. And I'll be honest, the people who maybe question Postacoglu are just not giving it a chance. They're being impatient. I just think we got to think where we are as, as, as a team. We were in the absolute trenches last year. It was If we didn't have Harry Kane, it's a bit like Chelsea this season, if we didn't have Harry Kane to their Cole Palmer... Where would we have been? People underestimated Ange Postacoglu, and he's gone on to, you know, wherever we finish this season would be an achievement. People thought we were going to finish below 10th, like Paul Merson that I've mentioned in a video recently. But we're not going to finish there. We're going to finish higher. We're going to have a good end to the season. We're going to go in these last few fixtures and really fight for this badge. I back this team. But let me know in the comments down below. Where do you rank Ange Postacoglu compared to Mourinho and Conte? Is he better than them? Is he going to achieve more at Tottenham than them? I believe so. I'd just like to know what you think as well. But yeah, let me know your thoughts. And if you have enjoyed this video, why don't you leave a like uh, below, subscribe to Sunny Talk Spurs, and hit the notification bell because it'll let you know when I've gone live. And also, don't forget, link in the description down below. You can become a member of Sunny Talk Spurs, help support the channel. And also, for 99p a month, you get exclusive access to my podcast, Nice one sunny until the next video i'll see you then sure